welcome back students into continuation of the chapter that is human reproduction now we are going to discuss about the male reproductive system so when we are talking about the male reproductive system and as i told you all uh, about that it consists of a pair of testes accessory ducts and several glands so here we are going to uh, uh, study the structures in detail as i told you all that the male reproductive system or the male reproductive uh, uh, organ is a pair of testes and these very testes they are present in the scrotum outside the body in the lower abdominal region the reason also i told you all that the uh, when uh, the uh, testes they lie outside the body then the temperature goes down by 2 to 2 and a half degrees celsius and as a result of that the uh, development and maturation of the sperm is become possible that is the very basic reason why the testes are descended in the scrotum outside the body now when we are talking about the testes each and every testes as i told you all it consists of a large number of testicular lobules round about 200 to 250 testicular lobules are present within each testes and each testes in turn each testicular lobule in turn it consists of seminiferous tubules we are going to be, uh, study the detailed structure of that then these testes from arising from the testicular lobules are the radial testes which combine up and open into the vasa afferentia the vasa afferentia in turn opens up into the epididymis and this epididymis then in turn opens up into the vasa deferens this vasa deferens then opens up into the uh, it, it uh, follows behind the uh, in the posterior region of the urinary bladder and then it opens up into the urethra which serves to be the common urinogenital aperture this urethra is the site of the storage uh, of the sperm as well as ejaculation of the sperms and opening into the urethra are various glands uh, when i was talking about the second portion that is the accessory ducts the accessory ducts as i told you all that it includes the radial testes the vasa afferentia the epididymis and the vasa deferens these are the accessory ducts which helps in the transfer of the sperms from the site of their formation that is the testes into the uh, site from where they are going to get transferred from the male reproductive system to the female reproductive system that is the urethra that is they provide a passage or a pathway for the sperms to get transferred into the female urinogenital tract now when we are talking about the urethra in urethra are opening three glands that is the seminal vesicle the prostate gland and the bulbo urethral gland the secretion of these glands helps in the formation of a fluid matrix which helps in the transport of uh, the male gametes that is the sperms from the male reproductive system to the female reproductive system and this very uh, fluid matrix is it is said to be the semen this semen is very much rich in calcium various uh, nutrient materials as well as it is very much rich in fructose then uh, the secretion of bulbo urethral gland in addition it provides lubrication to the sperms so that uh, uh, it provides lubrication to the uh, what to say the ejaculatory uh, tract or the copulatory organs that is the glans pannis which is going to transfer Uh, the uh, uh, male gametes uh, into the female reproductive system during the act of copulation so these are the three glands which were dealing uh, which we were dealing about this urethra this uh, urethra is a passage or a pathway which is very much uh, what to say protected or which runs all along the length of a muscular organ cylindrical muscular organ which is known as the glans pannis this glans pannis it is also said to be the uh ejaculatory organ or the copulatory organ which helps in the transfer of the male gametes into the female reproductive tract the uh, rear end of the glans pannis is covered up with a portion of a skin which is known as the foreskin then uh, dealing up with this this is the common and when we are talking about the urethra this urethra serves to be a common urinogenital pathway since and since the urinary bladder it also receives the urine through the ureters and 
this urine it is collected in the urinary bladder and it also follows the same pathway that is going to be followed by the sperms so now when we are going to deal up with the structure of the what to say uh, the testes in detail and how the formation of the sperms takes place over here when we are going to have a ts of testis and as i told you all that each testis is made up of a large number of testicular lobules and these lobules in turn they are made up of 2 to 3 seminiferous seminiferous tubules that run uh, lengthwise all along the testicular lobules so when we are going to have a magnified view of this testicular lobule then we can see that that these seminiferous tubules which are present in the testicular lobules are very much lined up lined up by cells two types of the cells which are said to be the germinal cells so these are the germinal cells and these germinal cells they are uh, going to enter into the process of meiosis these are germinal cells these are sertoli cells then they undergo the process of and they form primary spermatocytes then this is the secondary spermatocytes and these are the spermatozoa spermatids and then the spermatozoa so i am going to label it according to you primary spermatocytes this is secondary spermatocytes and then this is spermatids and these are spermatozoans and within this uh, this is the interstitial fluid or the connective tissue present between them is known as the interstitial connective tissue and the cells that are present are said to be the inter stitial cells or the leaded cells so here we are dealing up with the structure of the testis when we are going to have a cross section of the testis then it appears to be rounded in shape like this and as i said to you all that it consists of 200 to 250 testicular lobules and each testicular lobule in turn comprises of 2 to 3 seminiferous tubules present in them i am showing you over here the magnified view of the each testicular lobule as i said you all that each testicular lobule it consists of 2 to 3 seminiferous tubules and here again in magnification i have shown you all the process of formation of the sperms within each seminiferous tubule and i have said you all that the lining of each seminiferous tubule is made up of germinal epithelial cells these germinal epithelial cells along with uh, they are forming the lining uh, of the seminiferous tubules along with the sertoli cells that, that is the sertoli cells they are formed at regular time intervals in between the germinal epithelial cells these germinal epithelial cells they undergo meiotic division that is they undergo meiosis 
so as gametogenesis can take place and formation of gamete can take place that is reduction division is going to occur in them and these sertoli cells they serve to provide nutrition to the developing and maturing sperms then after this uh, the germinal epithelial cells when they enter into the meiotic division first of all they form the primary spermatocytes then the secondary spermatocytes the spermatids and then the spermatozoans which uh, uh, seem to be uh, lying in the central cavity or the lumen of each seminiferous tubule therefore uh, a large number of uh, what to say sperms can be seen lying in each cavity of the uh, in uh, in the uh, lumen of each seminiferous tubule as we all know that from a single germinal epithelial cell four spermat uh, uh, spermatozoans can be uh, what to say obtained then between each uh, between the seminiferous tubules the uh, uh, what to say the space between the seminiferous tubules is filled up with the interstitial tissue and lying between them are formed certain cells which are said to be the interstitial cells or the lyric cells these interstitial cells or the lyric cells they are very much responsible for production of certain type of the hormones which are said to be the male androgens or the male uh, what to say reproductive hormones especially the testosterone which are basically responsible for various activities that is the development and uh, of the uh, secondary sexual characteristics in uh, what to say uh, the male uh, human beings as well as uh it is also responsible for the development and maturation of the sperms in the male reproductive uh, in the male human beings so uh, in our next video we are going to talk about in detail the for uh, the uh, process of spermatogenesis thank you